Okay, hi guys. From the squatting situation happening in New York to it now expanding and them killing a mother um, because of the fact that they broke into her house and then stuffing her in a duffel bag, um, that's not the only thing that we have that's very questionable happening in the United States of America. We also have Biden being slammed for illegal immigrants coming into America and attacking Border Patrol. That's disgusting. We also have a new report alleging that election interference by Google has happened for over 16 years in a row. All of that and more on today's episode. Facts over facts over tracks. This and that spitting slow, spitting fast. I could roast, I could gas. Think I'm okay at last, but I don't know if that can erase all the past. So if my voice sounds a little bit different and a little bit more like low, I'm not complaining. I mean, I like my voice like this, but the thing is, that my voice is like this because I have a sore throat. I have really bad allergies because it's that time of the year. But you know what? <sighs> We're not really going to complain. It sounds like I went through puberty. So it's like it's finally happening to me. I'm so excited. And all of the comments that are saying that my voice is so high pitched and whatever can just stop because look, my voice is low again. My voice is low. Okay, so... Um, all in all serious notes, this is a very serious thing happening in America. And if you do not know what squatting is, I don't know where you have been because it's been a thing in major cities all around America. Even before this term squatting even took place, my my parents owned houses in the city that we live in, and they always rented it out to people. And when they didn't pay their rent, it would take two months, three months, even four months to actually get them out even though they weren't paying their rent unlike a city like nashville or i mean a state like nashville tennessee you know a city like nashville in tennessee where it's republican and republican or i guess it's a little bit more um liberal in the major cities but in the state as a whole in 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 the tennessee um it's more republican but nonetheless the rules and regulations that are in in tennessee is a lot better than than a state like California or a state like Massachusetts or New York. It's really, really bad in those states, in the in the latter states. Now, this is because of the fact that, like I just said, if people don't pay their rent, then you can't even kick them out for two months, three months, four months, because you need to go through housing court and civil trials and stuff like that. It's so messy. It doesn't even make any sense. But what makes even less sense is now people that are not even paying rent and never paid rent before can now just go into your house, change the locks, and claim that they were renting from you even though they were not ever renting from you. That's disgusting. That's a loophole in the law that should have never even happened. And the second that the government found out about this loophole, they should have said, no, we're not going to make sure... If this has anything to do with that and you do not in the in the owner said no, I do not know this person, then then no, you're gonna get out of his house. And even though some some landowners and some tenant I mean some landlords are gonna say no, I actually don't know him and lie that when they actually do know them. But it's more in the landlord's favor. Get off of my house if I do not want you in there. It does not matter. If I don't want you in my house, you do not need to be in my house. Now, of course, if there's a if the um, tenant can prove like I just paid, he wants me out, even though I just paid him yesterday, that's something totally different. But you can now say that the landlord has the right to do so because it's his house. He's paying the mortgage. He's paying the bills. The water bills are in his name. The mortgage is in his name. The insurance is in his name. Everything is in his name. The tenant does not pay anything if he's in there not paying rent he's not paying anything maybe even electric is included sometimes so it's like the tenant's not paying anything but the tenant wants to stay in the house doesn't make much sense here so we do have this new um thing that's happening it's called squatters going into people's houses when they're not home taking the house and even though they were never even renting from the landlord they are now tell the cops are now telling the landlords, no, no, you need you need to let them stay inside of your house for some reason. But this is actually going and getting more and more worse over time, worse and worse over time. So two squatters who took over a New York City home of a woman found beaten to death, stuffed in a duffel bag and being sought for murder, cops said. 
Um, two squatters being sought over for a gruesome murder of a 52-year-old woman whose body was found stuffed in a duffel bag inside her late mother's upscale Manhattan apartment last week, police said. Um, the victim, Nadia Vidal, was severely beaten by the two perps, by the two perpetrators, who she discovered them holed up inside the 19th floor apartment on 31st Street last week, according to cops. Having just flown in from Spain, Vidal has had gone to her late mom's apartment, which had been vacant for roughly three years and four months, to start prepping for it so uh, the family could move in. Um, we believe some squatters took over the apartment and this ro woman came home and walked into the squatters that were there, NYPD Chief of Detectives Jeffrey uh, Joseph Kenny said. The brutal beatdown left Vidal with blunt force trauma in her head, multiple um, facial structures, uh, brain bled, and two broken ribs, the cop said. The perpetrators whom the New York City Police Department hasn't identified publicly were seen on surveillance video fleeing the apartment after slaying and taking off the, the dead woman's uh, Lexus SUV. Yeah, that's crazy. And then they stole her car. This is purely like GTA. It's disgusting. They fled across George Washington Bridge through New Jersey to Pennsylvania, where they ultimately crashed the SUV in Lower Pexington Township, cops said. The New York City Police Department wasn't alerted until the following day, though, because Pennsylvania cops didn't immediately run the plates and see the, the vehicle was wanted in a homicide, um, Kenny said. Cops, okay, so they should have immediately ran the plates. I mean, um, cops said the squatters who remained on the lam Thursday, who visited several local car dealerships in the aftermath of the wreck, the wreck to buy a car for a $1,000 because they probably stole it from her. Um, the developers came after Vidal's son, Michael Medelov, um, 19, made the grim discovery of his mother's body when he went to the apartment with the building super on the afternoon of March 14th after not hearing from her for 14 of uh, 48 hours. That's crazy. He walked in on her. Oh God. He knew that she'd be in at the apartment because they tracked each other's locations via their cell phones. Police said, um, as they were getting ready to leave, the sons opened up the door, the closet door near the front door and discovers a duffel bag with the foot sticking out. Oh my God. I can't even imagine what the son is going through seeing your mom like that it wasn't immediately clear how long the perpetrators had been squatting in the apartment before the victim found them inside or how they even managed to gain access in the first place the apartment itself is a very unique in the f that there's no front door to the apartment you take an elevator up and then you key your way in the elevator is actually your front door kenny said adding that it's a an upscale apartment while cops haven't disclosed the identity of the two suspects, police horses previously per described them as a man and a woman in their 20s. As of right now, we have probable cause. We have two subjects. We have a regional fugitive task force actively hunting as we speak. Kenny said, adding one of the squatters has, has a prior arrest on their name. Yeah, of course. Um, there's some comments underneath this post, and I completely agree. While cops haven't disclosed the identity of the two suspects, police sources previously described them as a man and a woman in their 20s. The cops said that they are sought. Would not a public description, description be of value to the search? This is a result of logically charged um, lawmakers encouraging squatting by, the, by, by way of abused renter protection laws. They were burglars, not renters. And if there was a doorman or a super, they would have been investigated for complicity. Of course, and I completely agree. Yeah, and they should say the exactly what the people look like in this case because people are going to be lo uh, looking out. I mean, that's to keep the cities safer. If you're looking out for a suspect and you're saying, well, this, this suspect looks like this, this suspect looks like this, we can keep our eyes peeled and, and report any suspicious activities. But of course, we can't do that now because we have no description of the, the actual person. I completely agree with that. Um, but this goes hand in hand with our next story about a, an illegal immigrant going on TikTok and showing how illegal immigrants can take advantage of squatting laws. I guess this TikToker goes in 
and says, oh, you know, if a house is not occupied for an extended period of time, you can just go in and you can actually sell the house even though you don't even have permission to do so. Here's a video. Yeah, so it's just a crazy situation happening in New York, happening in other states as well, um, that they're not cracking down on this. It's about time that the that um, states need to start cracking down on this, and this is exactly what Florida is doing. They passed a law saying that if you are illegally in a house, it is against the law to be in the house. Whoa, oh my God, common sense laws. It's sad that you need to actually put that on the books. So I'm, I'm going to be surprised if more stories just like the one we talked about with the mom being found stuffed in a duffel bag inside of her closet are not on the mainstream in the next couple of months. All right, this is on the mainstream because this is on the New York Post. But the thing is, at the same time, I'm, su I'm going to be surprised if it's not more, it's, if it's not happening more, if they don't crack down on this. It's sad. It's, it's disgusting. And it's frankly... A, a disappointment of the government of the United States not for doing for not doing something more fast to actually fix the issue before it's a huge issue. And that's why I applaud Florida so much because they go and they say, okay, that's a problem. Let's get it passed. It passed overwhelmingly to make sure that people have the right to their own property. Intellectual property is disappearing in America and it's sad. We cannot own anything and they don't want us to own anything. That's the part of the plan. That's part of the plan. No, I'm not a writer. Okay. Moving into the next segment, we actually have the media's take. So digging right in, we actually have a CNN article. Blinken meets with Benjamin Netanyahu in Israel as diplomatic efforts ramp up. Now, I don't think that there's any effort because the United States government has been wishy-washy on Israel ever since the war within Israel and in the Gaza Strip with Hamas has taken place. Now, if everybody remembers on October 7th, Israel was actually attacked by Hamas. Israel is now defending itself because of the attack. They would have never needed to defend themselves if it wasn't for Hamas's attack. So, um, of course, that's what countries do. A free country, you, you go and attack another country for attacking you. That's called the self-defense here. Um, nobody's talking about how, how Ukraine needs to stop defending itself with Russia, a world superpower, no. But everybody cares when it comes down to a war, um, one of our allies, an ally that holds elections, um, holds a democracy every single year. The last election that they held was two years ago. Um, everybody cares when it comes down to that. But nobody cares when it comes down to Ukraine with now um, Zelensky saying that he's not going to hold another election. That's pathetic. Um, moving into the next article, or this article, I should say, we have the United States Secretary of State Anthony Blinken met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in Tel Aviv on Friday morning as a part of an intensive diplomatic push to reach a sustained and immediate ceasefire in Gaza. But you cannot have a ceasefire if Hamas is going to stay present in the region. Hamas is a terrorist regime that we have listed in America as a, as a terrorist organization ever since they came on the scene. So now what, they're not terrorists? It's like ISIS. Oh, well, you're, you're about to finish off ISIS. ISIS but no, no, just leave them alone. They're good. You, you beat them enough. They learned their lesson. No, because they're still here. They're still in control. We saw this exact thing happen in Afghanistan. It's pathetic. Um, the stop in Tel Aviv caps Blinken's sixth round of to, of shuffle democracy in the region since the October 7th Hamas attack on Israel. He arrived in the country just before 10 a.m. local time. Following his me meeting with Netanyahu, Blinken met with the Israeli war cabinet. Blinken's first um, coinices with the reception re resumption of ta talks in Dama aired at securing a deal for a ceasefire tied to the release of the hostages held by Hamas which is still holding Americans by t um, from today. They're still holding Americans today, by the way. If anybody was to forget that, Hamas is still holding American hostages in Hamas, in the Gaza Strip. Uh, relations between the Biden administration and the Netanyahu government has frayed in recent weeks. Yes, because Joe Biden is having his dementia 
stormed and dementia themed um you know breakthroughs in his head and saying wait a second who are you again are you corn pop i don't like you corn pop you you're a bad man and then netanyahu says i'm not corn pop and joe biden say oh then i like you then and then and then the second later he's like no you're corn pop i don't like you like what can you make up your mind? Are we with Israel or are we against Israel? Are we with Hamas or are we not with Hamas? You can't say, oh, I'm with you, Hamas. We need to give you aid. Yes, we need to give you aid um, at the same exact time as they do have aid. But Hamas is stealing it. It's a terrorist regime. They're shooting anybody that actually gets the food. So is that really helping? And then America tries to help by sending in air, air supplies of food to Gaza and it kills six people. So it's like you try to help. These people are so stupid that they hold. They're like, oh, that's food. And then it lands on top of their head. Like the America tries to help. It's not even helping. Just stay out of the war. You don't even know what you're doing. Oh, my goodness. It's just incompetence at the fullest extreme. Um, Blinken's meeting with this was expected to be tense with Netanyahu vowing to carry out the Israeli military incursion into Rafah, which they need to do to finish off Hamas where more than a million Gazans have been forced to flee. Yes, of course, because of the fact that they're funneling all of the terrorists over there. So then they can say, okay, the terror, uh, if, you're a, if you're a citizen of Gaza and the Gaza Strip, you need to go to the east. Go to the east, get out of the way of the military operation that we're conducting here. We're trying to go through the tunnels and get all the terrorists. They kill the terrorists, but of course, since there's, um, they're so embedded in the, in the innocent, civilians it's kind of hard tracking it down and then when the israeli military goes door to door knocking on the doors trying to find where the military is because it's hiding within the people which is a war crime by the way if they're hiding between house to house in side of tunnels underneath buildings they're going knocking door to door trying to find these terrorist people um then the israeli military actually suffers more greatly because of the fact that they get shot they get killed they get tortured they get they um get stepped on they get brought they get kidnapped because of the fact that they're going door to door they're not just missling a whole entire area and blowing up the whole entire gaza strip people are acting like they actually want to do that why would they even want to do that um meanwhile hamas is still attacking at israel till today um with ceasefire talks re resuming in doma um, CIA Director Bill Burns is expected to travel to Qatar capital to meet with counterparts w from Israel, Qatar, Egypt. In recent days, Blinken voiced ca um, cautions optimism that an agreement could be reached but not conceded. There are still real challenges. No, you know what? This is the solution here. Rafa is right next door to Egypt. Egypt must, with a M, open up its borders and take in the Muslim people that they say that they actually enjoy and that they actually support. Because Egypt is saying, well, actually, no, I, I don't think that you should, you should be doing this. Okay, then let in the people. No, no, I don't want the people then. Okay, then sh shut your mouth and let Israel conduct the operation that you, Egypt, refuse to do. And then America has a, has a motivation to actually do so because we give Egypt billions of dollars per year. So if we go to Israel, uh, Egypt and say, listen, if you don't open up your borders to the people that are Muslim, your own, your own people, just like how if we have Americans abroad, we need to open up to those Americans. And then you can say, well, they're terrorists. Region. OK, so file through and say, OK, are you terrorists? Are you terrorists? Research the people. But you can let them in. This has started in October, October, November, December, January, February, March. This has been almost six months half a year that Egypt has been uh, Egypt could be investigating these people and allowing them to come into Egypt but they closed the borders between Egypt and Rafah they closed the borders between the greater um Gaza strip and Egypt they closed those borders they're not letting humanitarian aid come through their borders they're not doing that the only person that's letting humanitarian aid into Gaza in the Gaza strip more generally is Israel. That's the person that, and that's the country that's letting in the foreign aid. And Israel has donated more foreign aid than any other person. They're letting in the trucks. They're they're going through the truckloads of aid going into Gaza and the and I mean into Hamas and the Gaza Strip. They're going through, and it's sad because everybody doesn't even have the right information because they're getting their information from the Hamas 
from Hamas, from the Gaza Strip. Hamas is the person stealing the humanitarian aid. We have went through the billions of dollars that Hamas has gotten in foreign aid, and everybody refuses to look at those facts. That's from AP articles. I show people in the comment section. Everybody's like, well, the, no, you need to give them aid. Yes, we did give them aid. They received a billion with a B dollars of foreign aid. They got plenty of aid. Hamas steals it, brings it down to their tunnels, and does not give it to the people. Since when has it been on a foreign government to supply the people that elect a government to take control of the government and give them the aid? Like, it does not make any sense here. Just like America, if the people of America need, for, need aid, then it's on the government of America to make sure that the people have aid. It's not on Mexico. It's not on China. It's, on, it's not on Taiwan or, or Puerto Rico. It's not on, on any other country, um, South Korea, North Korea. It's not on any other country to give us, America, aid. It's on us. So, it's foreign aid. It's complicated. I get it. It's a lot. It's, it cannot be boiled down to the back of a napkin. But at the same exact time, we can sit here and look at common sense. We cannot just turn a blind eye and turn our way when common sense slaps us in the face. It does not make much sense. Moving on to the next article, we actually have a Daily Wire article. We have new report alleges election interference by Google over a 16-year period. Now, we already know that Google looks at search results and says, oh, no, well, let's take this out. Let's put this in. Let's take this out. Oh, this is going to benefit a certain candidate. Let's keep that in then. That's what they do because they're highly Democrat. They're woke as hell. If you have not already switched to Duck, Duck, Go. It's just like Google. It's not sponsored, by the way. It's just like Google, but they actually don't censor information. So before we do get dig into this article here, we do have a sponsorship by Chase. So if you do want to... If you do not like the recession that, that we're having and you do not like wasting your money, then you can actually earn $200 in cash back with the Chase Freedom Unlimited. I actually have this card. Or you can actually get the Chase Freedom Flex card. And when you do, you are awarded with a $200 cash back bonus. And with the Chase Freedom Unlimited, you get 5% cash back when booking um, vacations with Chase. You actually get... Um, 3% cash back at drugstores, 3% cash back at um, certain grocery stores. And with the Chase Freedom Flex card, you actually get 5% cash back at revolving categories. So this is a very, very great card if you do want to get some cash back in this recession that we're having here. If you do want to sign up for the card, the link's going to be down below. So without further ado, we're going to be digging into the article here. So according to the Daily Wire and a new report from the Media Research Group, Google has a lit um, allegedly been engaging in election interference for the past 16 years. The media watchdog group has been studying how Google's search algorithms are used for censorship. Daily Wire reporter uh, Megan Batham, Basham, Basham I'm sorry, spoke with Morning Wire's Georgia Howe about the allegations. Um, so um, Megan Basham says, yes, there's a lot of, there's a lot of elections... This report, just released by a media research group's a media research center's Free Speech America arm, says Google interfered in the United States elections 41 times since 2008. And when you take a look at Google's donations for political parties in just the 2018 midterm elections, for example, you can see how they aligned the company with one side of the political aisle. 96% of its employees' political donations went to Democrats. So according to the media research group's um, a media research center, the company utilized its power to help push a electoral victory in the most liberal candidates while targeting their opponents for censorship. In 2022, for instance, it allowed users to engage in, pra in a practice called a Google bomb to target Republican presidential candidate Rick Santorum. It's kind of complicated, but it's basically a way to smear a candidate. And it's very, very interesting because um, if you do take a look at the Project Veritas um, investigation, you can actually see an ins a Google Insider um, exposes hundreds of documents and actually says why they Google actually does this. Um, yeah, I mean, it it's just crazy right here because... Obviously, we knew that the search results were skewed, but we did not know that the search results were this skewed. 
to make sure that they actually hide results for other candidates that bad. That's bad. It's really, really bad. At this point, we should not be trusting Google for anything. Um, with that being said, we do have another article from The Federalist. We have everything Senate Democrats lied about during their IVF and abortion for all hearing. So, Democrats' extre extremism on abortion and assisted pro reproductive, reproductive technology was on full di display on Wednesday as senators on the Judiciary Committee heard testimony from activists, donors, and infertile fertilization cli clients in a hearing titled The Con Continued assault on reproductive freedoms in a post-Dobbs America, Democrats led by Chairman Dick Durbin <clears throat> argued that pro-life wins like life-saving limits on abortion and recognizing <clears throat> excuse me, um, valuable unborn children as humans are dangerous and radical. In reality, Democrats and their witnesses repeatedly lied about the science, data, and laws surrounding life in the womb to, to sugarcoat their radical belief that adults have the, quote, right to create and murder children at whatever womb or cost. Here are some of the worst falsehoods. Lie number one, women are being denied crucial medical care. Dubin invoked Amanda Zewiski, a Texan who testified to the committee last year about going into premature labor in suspicious at just 18 weeks gestation, as, as an example for a woman with non-viable, life-threatening pregnancies, being denied what he called medical care or abortions. Durbin pr purported that Zewinsky's doctors wanted to give her an abortion, but couldn't under Lone Star state law. In fact, he claimed doctors in general are no longer able to use their best medical judgment to treat patients anymore due to pro-life laws. Zelensky did eventually get her abortion, and none of her medical team was per prosecuted because it was not an illegal abortion. Women under every pro-life law in the books are entitled to care for in exoptic pregnancies, miscarriages, or any other potentially fatal complications. Like, like Zelensky, that crop up during gestation. At, at, at least 22 states maintain clear and explicit expectations for induced abortion. And a mother's life is in jeopardy, if a mother's life is in jeopardy. Line number two, Alabama's embryo ruling forced IVF halt. Dubin ass asserted that the Alabama Supreme Court's heartbreaking ruling recognizes frozen embryos as life under the state law, resulted in numerous IVF clinics in the state halting their services. It was their, of their own violation in that facility of Fertility facilities stopped IVF operations due to concern that the standard practice of severely creating and discarding unlimited embryos might put them in a legal book for negligence. Yeah, and I completely agree. If you're doing unlimited embryos and then you're just killing like 500 babies just because of the fact that you want one baby or 10 babies or 50 babies, what makes those 50 lives more valuable than the other 350 that you created. It doesn't make any sense here. You're playing God. Um, line number three, rape and incest survivors can't get abortions. At least eight pro-life states have exceptions for abortions in the case of rape or incest. Yet, yeah, Dubin incorrectly claimed that rape and incest survivors are being victimized by the system that makes it harder for them to end an unwanted pregnancy. Line number four, IVF is a medically necessary right. Witness Jamie Hard, an Alabama woman whose IVF cycle was put on hold last month, said that in her opening statement, similar to Democrat claims that IVF is medically necessary and reproduction by whatever means is a human right. Does not mean any, it doesn't even make any sense here. Um, continuing, neither is true. The serial creation of embryos, most of which will be frozen, discarded, or dismembered for research purposes, quote unquote, is not necessary to produce a child. Similarly, outsourcing reproduction, especially for couples that have been a natural that have the natural capacity to receive with some natural treatment and tweaks, is no more than a legal or human right than killing an unborn baby. As then before us, founder Katie Burst told the Federalists in January, there is no quote right to artificially and chemically manufacture children in a laboratory, nor a quote right to separate them from one or bro both biological parents. Line number five, embryos aren't humans. Senator Tammy Duckworth, Democrat from Illinois, 
who served as a witness during the hearing on Wednesday, referred to a human embryo as merely a cluster of cells. That is, quote, not yet a human being. She also asserted that classifying embryos as life is merely a moral belief. It's not true. It definitely is, because from, by every definition, that's the earliest stage of life. The fundamental reality is that every fertilized egg is unbelievably precious. Unfortunately, not all will become a living, breathing child whose laughter will joy, enjoy will fill our hearts and enrich our lives, Duckworth said. On the contrary, modern science, medicine, and many states, even at, in even at times, abortion, giant, Planned Parenthood, have, have all agreed that life begins at conception. Plenty of parents who lose their babies in lab accidents, like in Alabama, though mi through miscarriage or s by stillbirth, acknowledge that even children who do not make it out of the womb to become a, quote, leaving, breathing child whose laughter and joy will fill our hearts and enrich our lives, have inherent value and are worth protecting. Yeah, I completely agree. So just because of the fact that the baby is kicking inside of your inside of you, the wife, that's not a living baby. The baby is literally kicking inside of your stomach. You can feel the baby moving inside of your stomach. But no, that's not a baby. Just because of the fact that why? Why isn't it a baby again? It doesn't make any sense. The baby's kicking inside of you. It's a living thing. Um, line number six, Duckworth's bill would not protect radical procedures. Duckworth claimed during her uh, testimony that her stiffed Access to Family Building Act only shielded evidence-based medical science for care for IVF from regulation. The vague language in the bill, however, could easily be considered to cover the creation of motherless and fatherless designer babies, chem chemically sur surrogacy, and experimental transhumanist technologies that, such as artificial wombs, gene editing, and reproduction with a woman. If passed, the legislation would effectively prohibit politicians and states from reining in even the most unethical and immoral aspects of big fertility. Line number seven, late-term abortion is the same as delivery. Um, Lourdes A. Rivia, the president of Pregnancy Justice and other, and another Another one of the Democrats' witnesses would not explicitly tell Republicans on the Senate Judiciary Committee if she supported an abortion, any abortion limits. Instead, she repeatedly claims that abortions that happen close to the nine month of gestation are considered labor in delivery. As witness, Dr. Minnick um, Weber, Weber and host noted in her testimony that the key difference between late term abortion and normal birth is that one uh, is designed to end with the dead baby while the other hopes to end up uh, end with a living one. Any attempted abortion of a full-term child that results in a baby being born alive is considered a botched. Um, line number eight, abortion pills are safe. Senator, okay, that doesn't make any sense here. Abortion pills are safe. It's literally killing somebody. Um, Senator Amy Colbert chair claims during her questioning time that abortion pills are perfectly safe for a woman to use to expel babies from their wombs. It's literally killing somebody. How's that safe? On the contrary, research shows um, mifepristin is responsible for a 500% increase in abortion-related emergency room visits that have caused infant and mother fertilities. Thanks to radically relaxed policies introduced by, introduced by the Biden administration, Droves of women begin drowning their drugs at home alone, leaving them susceptible to hemorrhage and other complications such as fast, weak pulse, shortness of breath, diarrhea, dizziness, headache, vomiting, and pain across the back, arms, neck, and abdomen just because of the fact that they did not want to give birth to the baby. It's sad. It really is sad. Oh, I didn't want to leave it on such a bad note, but... That's going to be the last article that we actually have for you guys today. If you did enjoy this article article, and you do want to see some more, please like and subscribe down below because I do post new episodes of the show every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for listening, and I hope they have a great rest of your day. Bye.